Ozzy, and I quit my full-time job over a year ago, and I've been running away from the 9 to 5 grind ever since. Travel pet sitting is clutch to my career break budget. I'm actually living rent free basically thanks to house sitting and pet sitting for the next several months. And in this video, I'll be providing my comprehensive guide on all the essentials on how to become a house sitter, how to get your first house sitting job, my experience with trusted house sitters, and of course my pro tips on getting the best sits for your travel and lifestyle vibes. If you're feeling this video and want to hear more, please put it in the comments and of course like and subscribe. Let me just go ahead and get this out of the way. Not all house sitting and pet sitting is paid. And generally there is a trade-off. So if you want to travel, especially internationally, you may need to be okay with doing unpaid sits. And if you want that cash money, you may be limited to domestic house sitting. Yes, while I like money, my priority was travel and staying in really nice accommodations, which is why I went with Trusted House Sitters, which is a platform for pet lovers who love to travel. Trusted House Sitters is really great for both short and long-term travel, of course, it's great for digital nomads and remote workers. And it's really just good for anyone who likes animals. You can join Trusted House Sitters as a solo sitter like me, or you can travel as a couple. And there's even an option to bring your own pet along. It's a paid membership and you can sign up as a sitter, as a pet owner, or a combination of the two. And we ain't suckers who pay full price up in here. No, 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 honey. Check out my description for a 25% off referral code. So let's get into my first pro tip. Start earlier than you need to. You need time to build up your reputation and get some reviews. Because think about it, owners are welcoming strangers into their home. So it's so important to drive a really great first impression by having really great profile pictures that show your personality, ideally with pets. And of course, a bio. You can go in depth, say about you, about your experience. You can only hype yourself up so much so you also need reviews. People often prefer local house sitters, so that is the best way to go before you start applying for those really desirable travel sits. Trusted house sits have literally thousands of sit opportunities around the world. Which brings me to my second pro tip, filters are your friend. Don't do all that work manually scrolling around looking for your dream sit. Use those filters, put them to work for you, filter in your preferences, and filter out your deal breakers. As part of this pro tip, I definitely recommend downloading the mobile app because on there, you can turn your filters into alerts. With those alerts, you'll get push notifications as soon as your ideal sits are looking for someone, which is so clutch because you gotta be quick with those really desirable sits. Which brings me to pro tip number three, be ready to pitch yourself. It's not enough to just find the seat you want. You gotta apply and you gotta stand out. Like I just said, timing is key, but quality matters too. When you get that alert, be ready to pitch yourself. Make that note personal and also ask for a meeting or a call, ideally a video call as a next step. Have a template message in your phone notes so you can apply quickly on the go. Just quickly customize it and send it off. On to my next pro tip and we're gonna get real here. You gotta prepare to be flexible. With trusted house sitters and just pet sitting in general, the owner has all the power. I don't know a nicer way to say it. They just have all the power. They set the dates, they get to choose you, and also they can change their dates or completely cancel on you too. Very last minute too. So I have a series of sits back to back to back to back for the next few months. And a week before my first sit, I get messages not only from my first sit, but also my second sit saying that they need to cancel. <laughs> Did I mention this was the week before? My first full month of housing is suddenly compromised. I recommend considering having some sort of backup plan in mind. Maybe just getting flexible airfare so you can pivot real quick or just going to pet sitting hubs so there are other sits readily available if one falls through. Circling back to the trusted house sitters, there's different membership levels and each membership comes with a certain level of benefits. Since I knew I was gonna be relying on this a lot, I went with the highest level, which includes cancellation insurance. But honey, 
<laughs> when I tried to use that cancellation insurance, customer service. They were MIA when I needed them. Luckily for me, within like a day or two, I actually got two sets that fit within the same day. And luckily I had a flexible airfare to move my flight around without paying anything extra. The cancellation insurance, I'm a little sus about. I'm glad I have it for my own peace of mind, but it doesn't seem particularly easy to use when you clearly need it. But again, this emphasizes my point. You're really at the mercy of pet owners in a lot of these situations, which is why it is so key to make sure your expectations and vibes align not only with you, the pet owner, and also the pets. That is so crucial because it's gonna be the foundation of the vibe of wherever you're going. You want to have the lowest amount of drama and the highest amount of comfort, joy, and adventure. So definitely make sure to vibe check before you even commit to the sit. And that brings up another point too. Expectations can vary widely from pet owner to pet owner, and the needs can vary widely from each home, each pet, so it's really important to not assume anything and get those things that would ruin your trip clear and make sure you have the things you need to. So the first place I look for this vibe check is the listing. So for the home and location, green flags I look for is that they're sharing details about the neighborhood, the amenities of their place. If they're sharing all that, it's clear that they see this as an exchange and they're treating it as such and they're really trying to show the value for you to take their sit and they wanna make sure that you're comfortable. And it shows that they acknowledge that you are not just a pet sitter or house sitter, but you are a traveler who wants to enjoy your environment and explore. And under the responsibilities, green flags I look for are details. I'd rather know right up front all the specifics of the day-to-day -day so I can really picture if this aligns with the vibe I'm looking for for whatever destination I'm going. I look at the pictures, of course, and it's a huge green flag if their place looks clean. And it reminds me of like a nice Airbnb that I would like to stay in. And just like people can't just rely on what you say about yourself, you can't rely exclusively on what they say about themselves. So you also want to dig into the feedback and reviews. Seeing those reviews is really illuminating because you get a sense of how the pet sitter thought about the pet, the home, and the host. And of course, you also want to see the reviews that they've given to their past pet sitters. So you have a sense of what they've appreciated in others, what standards that they're used to. I will say, this is like a double-edged sword. Trusted House Sitters has a very amazing and supportive community. There's a lot of generosity in the environment. And you think that's all good, but it also means that the environment, people are really reluctant to give honest negative feedback. So again, looking at the listings and the feedback and the reviews and everything, you still have to read between the lines and look for that coded language. See what is left out that might be illuminating. Pay attention to word choice. Like if a review mentions only the pet, doesn't talk about the home or the host, it's like, okay, maybe the vibes were there. This has already bitten me in the booty. One of my sits, the dog was super anxious. He needed to be on me, this constant human contact. He was humping me a lot. He was whining a lot. It was, he just always had to be on me. And it was a, like a three week sit. And looking back at the listings and the feedback, they said stuff like, oh, the dog is really affectionate. Oh, he's really cuddly. He loves attention. That dog had anxiety. <laughs> and the owner never used that word <laughs> until I was in the sit. And she was like, oh yeah, he has a lot of anxiety. So you, like, people are not gonna be like, yo, your pet is anxious. And they're not gonna warn us. And another thing I'll note with this is the way that Trusted House Sitters gives reviews also doesn't lend itself to like complete honesty because I could review the pet owner first and that pet owner could see my review before they send me mine back. So that can introduce some bias like, oh, you gave me a good review, I might as well give you a good review too, even though I had some issues. But since you didn't bring up anything for me, let me just keep it cool. So again, you really gotta, you can't really, you kinda need to take even good reviews with a grain of salt on this platform. I have seen bad reviews, but it's so extreme. It's either a five star or a one star. 
But the common thread I've seen in the few bad reviews I've noticed is that misalignment and expectations. This is why I always recommend setting up a meeting, a call, ideally a video call with any potential pet owner before you commit to the sit. Doing all that sleuthing on the listings and the reviews and the feedback will kind of give you a sense of some of the things you might want to bring up in this call. But here are some things I recommend always asking. The first thing I recommend always asking is the location. And this is another thumbs down from trusted house sitters. It's clear that they don't really do consistent quality control for how people label the location of their sits. And people will take creative liberties. This hits close to home because I found out that one of my sits coming up, the listing said the major city, the actual like icon of the location said the city. And looking at the description, it never mentioned any other place. But when I got the address, the city is nowhere in the address. And not only that, the location of the sit is about 40 minute drive south of the city. Luckily for me, since I'm digital nomading, I'm staying in places for months and months, and I'll have multiple sits in the city, it's not a huge loss, but honestly, I would be pretty devastated if I was in a traveler tourist mode, thinking I was gonna be in that city. Pet owners probably don't wanna give their address away, especially before they've confirmed anything with you, but ask for the neighborhood name, ask for cross streets, ask for like local landmarks, just so you can Google Maps it yourself and really see how far these sits are from the attractions you want to go to. Even if you're not in a tourist mode, you might want to make sure that the city is comfortable for your lifestyle. Like sometimes you'll be staying in places where you'll need a car and you'll not have a car. So you might want to check to see if there's grocery stores nearby or there's cafes for you to work. Another thing I ask everyone I sit for is how often do you want updates on how your house is, how your pet is doing? And make it okay for them to ask for daily updates because some people want that daily update. I get it. Your pet is like your baby. I get it. And also, of course, you want to get information about the pet and house needs. Even if it's already really detailed in the listing, you really want to paint a picture and see if there's any elaborations. You'll want to be as direct as possible, especially around your deal breakers. Like for me, I don't want to sleep in the bed with no animal. I have insomnia, I'm a light sleeper, it's just miserable for me. And people don't always mention that in their, their listings, which totally makes sense because it's so specific. So I always ask that point blank. You'll want to know how long their pet can be comfortably left alone. You'll want to ask them again about behavioral issues. You'll want to ask them about the pet's personality, their temperament, any anxiety triggers. You want to know what soothes the pet. You also want to know what the pet loves. Like, are they food motivated? Do they like treats? Do they like walks and outside time? Because at the end of the day, amazing accommodations aside, you are still taking care of an animal in a lot of these cases with emotional needs, social needs, and all that. You're responsible for that, and you have to take that responsibility seriously. And with all this questioning, you'll really just want to get a sense of how this pet's needs, the routine, the location, the host, the accommodations, the amenities, all this stuff. You're just making sure that everything about this sit aligns with your desired vibe. A great example, I was just in Seattle. I had an amazing sit right by the Space Needle. It was a five minute walk. The pets were so chill too, low maintenance. So that is like a great combination for if you're in that tourist energy. And of course, if you're a digital nomad or if you plan to do any online work, you want to make sure that there's fast Wi-Fi, and it might be an extra special perk if you're staying at a place with a home office. And if you're traveling long term like me, a house might get extra, extra brownie points by having amazing kitchen. Like the place I'm in now, counter space for days, all of these cooking utensils and instruments that I would never find in an Airbnb or a hotel or even a co-living space as a nomad. So this is an extra special treat, and honestly, that, like having a great kitchen is one of the things that makes doing this pet sitting vibe way better than other ways I've traveled. And of course, securing the sit is only the beginning. I recommend asking for a welcome guide. So shortly after you're done with that sit, you wanna ask for a review and also give one back. I 
I've kind of sprinkled my review of trusted house sitters throughout, but let me just break down my top three pros and cons. I think the biggest pro is the community. They're really supportive. They really want to try to help. Like I've been picked up from the airport. I've been given flexibility about when I stay or leave to help with my travel vibes. And another big pro is the quality of the accommodations. You're staying in beautiful places. They have different amenities like hot tubs, really comfortable beds, home offices. I am really appreciating living in a place that people actually live because Airbnbs, co-livings, all those places designed for travelers, it's hard to really feel like you can fully live there. Their kitchens are limited. I did even look at Airbnb to kind of get a sense of how much staying in these neighborhoods with similar quality places and i'm basically saving like thousands of dollars each sit a big pro is the volume of available sits literally thousands around the world even when i had a cancellation i quickly got two other sits right away i actually did look into other house sitting options because i didn't want to recommend trusted house sitters knowing that there's like a paywall knowing that you don't get paid but when I was looking at these other sources, they didn't have as many sits or the places weren't as nice. And also in those paid scenarios, sometimes you really didn't even have the opportunity to even see the place unless you specifically ask. On the con side for trusted house sitters, while there are a lot of sits available, they're not evenly distributed by any means. There are clear geographical hubs where there are a lot more sits. And there are certain places that I would like to travel to where there's very few and far between sits, like different parts of Latin America. And honestly, finding just a pure house sit without any pets, there's usually about <laughs> like zero to six at a time. It's minimal. Another kind of con is you don't know that a sit is available until they post it. And there isn't consistency on how far in advance people post. So looking back, I did I did commit to a lot of my sits maybe a little too early. And then in the weeks to come, I've seen a lot more sits pop up in some of the cities that were like higher on my list to go to. Sometimes I do feel like the pet owners are getting way more value than the sitter. And I think it comes down to the fact that I keep on bringing up money. Clearly I'm not over it, but you're doing a thing that people do pay for. It's easy to spend hundreds of dollars for a house sitter. They pay a one flat membership fee and they get all the free house sitting they need. But for the sitter, the value is a bit more ambiguous because it really comes down to the quality of the individual sit, which trusted house sitters doesn't really control for, which is why I recommend all of what I said before to make sure you're actually getting the fit. And my last con, no surprise, after my cancellation fiasco, I am giving customer service a side eye. So with all my best gems revealed, I send you out confidently into the house sitting universe. So let me know what tip was your favorite, where you are in your house sitting journey. Are you just thinking about it? Are there certain places you want to go? Put it in the comments. Let's chat. Let's chat about it. And please like and subscribe. House sitting is just one of many strategies I'm using for my career break. If you want to hear about more, check out my next video. All right. That is all for now. Until next time. Peace.